Hello and welcome everybody. This is section 9 of our notes and here we, here we are going to discuss the influence of individual observations on the regression estimate. And that comes in two parts. In this first part we will discuss how much do the beta hat, the estimated regression coefficients change if we remove one observation from the estimate. And in the second video, in the second section of chapter 9, we will see what is the natural scale for these changes and how do we know whether a number we get is to be considered large or not. Good, but let's first start at the start and work out if we remove one observation from the estimate, how do the beta hat change. The strategy in this section is that we want to know how important is a single information for the estimate overall. And we are going to study that by just throwing out the observation and seeing how much does the estimate change. That seems an honest measure for how important is the observation. So what we have is, here's our design matrix X that has P plus one columns because there's a column of one at the start and n rows. And if we want to know how influential is observation i, then we would just throw out i, and with this one smaller matrix, one fewer rows, we would compute a new estimate. So we have beta hat is x transpose x inverse x transpose y. And I didn't write that here. We have also this vector y. And of course, we need to also throw out the corresponding observation yi when we do the reduced estimate. So beta hat, and now for a reason I will explain in a second, I want to write in capital I here. So beta hat I is the smaller matrix, inverse, smaller matrix, transpose, the smaller y. And the reason I'm writing capital I here is that for no extra effort, we can also consider the case where we throw out more than one observation. So I is which ones are thrown out. That is a subset of all the observations and that is the deleted observations. Good, and we want to compare these two estimates. Now, what do we need to do? We need to just work out what is the difference in these terms and how does this propagate through the operations here into the estimates. And I want as kind of an exercise start by just comparing the terms at the end. So these are rather easy. Let's try this first. So the first aim is compare x transpose y to the reduced version x with the rows removed transpose y i. And that is now rather easy, namely we know how these things work. So x transpose is here and y is here and the multiplication goes, we go along columns here, there is only one column, go along rows here and we multiply the elements and add them all up. And then the result will have as many rows as x transpose has rows, so p plus one, and as many columns as y has columns, so one column. And now let's say we threw out the last few rows of x and then correspondingly the last few entries of y. Then what happens is when we go along the rows and the column of y, then just some terms in the sum are missing. So we have for the original estimate sum x, i, j, y, j, and j goes from one to n that is x transpose y i's component. And now if we leave out the hatched blue bit, then the sum goes now over still j from one to n, but only the ones which are not in i, i is what we deleted from x, x i j y i, and that is x i transpose y i, and then i's component. Good. and. That is really at the core of it. We need some tricks to do the algebra, but really that is all there is to the main idea. Namely, if we compare these two, it is obvious the difference is this has some more terms. So if we subtract these two, then the difference is just the terms we left out here. So x transpose y minus x transpose i y i is 
I just set it, it's the terms we left out, so we just need a name for it. Let's say it's xi transpose yi, where xi is the part of x we deleted, and yi is the part of y we deleted. So that's really all there is. So we just do that. There will be more instances of this, for example, here for this matrix matrix product. And the main complication now is to see how does this work through the inverse. So let's do the matrix product first, and then we think about the inverse. So similarly, x transpose x minus xi transpose xi. For simplicity, I draw the deleted rows at the end again. They could, of course, be spread all over x. But for wherever they are in this product, the difference between this and that is that when we go through rows here and column there, that we just leave out the blue bits. So the difference is just what we get from the blue bits. So that will be xi transpose xi, whereas before xi transpose is this blue bit and xi is that blue bit. Now the next question is, and that is maybe the only difficult bit, we need the inverse of this matrix. So we need the inverse of a difference. And there is no easy way to do that. Let us first try that out with numbers so that we see how that works. So assume we have the inverse for numbers would be just 1 over x or 1 over the number. And we want 1 over the reduced thing x minus, I just write c for constant, then, well, we can write 1 over x minus c as a function of 1 over x, but it's a bit fiddly. So 1 over x minus c is, for example, I could probably do 1 over 1 over x, which gives me x, and then I can subtract the c, and then I can do 1 over this, for example. There may be different ways of doing that, and you see that is not 100% straightforward, and we need to do the same thing for matrices. We want to reduce the inverse of that difference to the inverse of this. And the nodes have a lemma to do that. Let me just write that. A minus u transpose v inverse is A inverse plus A inverse u transpose identity minus v a inverse u transpose inverse v a inverse. For matrices, the order of terms is important. So for example, that a inverse and that a inverse, we cannot merge with each other. So that's why it looks a bit more complicated than a formula for numbers. And also that formula is made for the special case if the matrix we subtract is a product of two matrices of lower rank typically. And that is the situation we have here. So we will have u and v both equal to x with zeros and i removed. So that's the formula we are going to use. And I'm just showing you the proof. The proof is easy once you know the answer, namely once you know the answer to check, we just need to multiply these two matrices. And if really this matrix is the inverse of that matrix, then the product will be the identity matrix. So let's try that. So we have A minus U transpose V times the whole thing. And now what we need to do is, well, the minus here and the plus here. So if we expand all the brackets, we will get four terms. Let's just patiently write them. It's A, A inverse minus U transpose V, A inverse. That is the first term dealt with. And now the same thing with that one. So plus a, a inverse u transpose identity minus v, a inverse u transpose inverse v, a inverse minus, and now we need this with that, u transpose v, a inverse u transpose identity minus v, a inverse u transpose inverse v, a inverse. Good. First thing, that is identity. So that's good for us because we want identity. So we need to just hope that all the remaining terms cancel. So that is identity. Then if you do this thing, I think 
the inverse is the term which is difficult to deal with. So we need to make sure we can cancel this. And the only way to cancel this is to arrange things that we have an identity minus V A inverse U transpose next to it. And here we have already a V A inverse U transpose. So let's see whether we can do something with that. Oh yes, it works. I see that. So this bit we can cancel because A A inverse is identity. And then this matches that and this matches that. So we can think of having an identity matrix in here that doesn't change anything. And then we combine these two terms and get U transpose identity minus this times the rest. So let me write that. I should not forget this term U transpose V A inverse and then U transpose. Then I get identity minus V A inverse U transpose. That's the red terms. And then I continue with the terms I had earlier written in blue. So identity minus V A inverse U transpose inverse V A inverse. Good. Then this cancels because I have a matrix and it's inverse. And you already see what's going to happen. So it's I minus U transpose V A inverse. And if I cancel these two middle terms, I get plus U transpose V A inverse is identity. So that's what we needed. And we found that this long expression really is the inverse of that short expression. Great. So let's use that. We had X I transpose X I. So that's X transpose X minus X transpose I X I. And now we need to just patiently apply the formula for the inverse. So I write that in blue. That's U transpose and that's V and that's A in the formula. So we need to just plug that in. So it's A inverse first. X transpose X inverse. Then X transpose X inverse. U transpose is X I transpose. Then identity minus X I X transpose X inverse X I transpose. The inverse of that V is X I again. And then we have X transpose X inverse. Okay, so we have this. That is a bit of a mouthful. So first, as a shorthand, that thing that looks a bit similar to the hat matrix, and I want to call that HII. And if you look what's going on here, what happens is that select the rows from I, so the rows we threw out of the original estimate, these rows are included here, and they are excluded here as columns, so that's a sub matrix of the hat matrix, which has all the rows and all the columns of I. So if H is this, that's an N by N matrix, and if we say, as in the example before, maybe I is just the last few numbers, then HII would be that submatrix. That's what we have here. And that's just shorthand, but then makes it a bit more convenient to write. So we can just write HII here. Then the next step is we have beta hat I, the quantity we're interested in, is XI transpose XI inverse. Xi transpose Yi. And we just plug that together now. And you see a tiny bit happens immediately. So that is X transpose X inverse plus X transpose X inverse Xi transpose identity minus Hii inverse Xi X transpose X inverse. And then coming from here, we have another X with rows I removed, transpose Y with entries I removed. Good, so we have that. And we already worked out this term, so that is the original term X transpose Y with the row I terms removed. So we can here write X transpose Y minus X I transpose Y I. And now when you multiply that out, you already see X transpose X inverse times X transpose Y. So this times this together gives beta X transpose X 
inverse x transpose y is beta hat, our original estimate. So the difference between the estimate with rows i removed and the original estimate is what's left over. And again, if we multiply out these two brackets, then we get four terms. One of them is the original estimate and the remaining three are the difference. And in the notes, I give you the full algebra, so these terms are easy to get. And then there is a bit of a fiddly calculation to simplify them. And when you do all of that, what you get is in the end that beta hat i minus beta hat, that these three terms. And after I simplify them, I get minus x transpose x inverse x i transpose identity minus h i i, that's the submatrix of the hat matrix, inverse epsilon hat i, where epsilon hat i is just the entries i of the residuals. So the old residuals, nothing new, y i minus y hat i, i in i. Good, that is the result we were after. And if we look at that, we see that is quite good, namely we can compute that all in terms of things we already know. The residuals we already know, they are easy to compute, and R tells you what they are if you call LM. The hat matrix we can figure out, so we can also figure out what this submatrix of the hat matrix, and typically we will only leave out one observation, so typically that will be a one by one submatrix or a number. So in this case, that thing is a number inverse, so that will really turn then in the interesting cases, i set of rows we deleted is just row i, then that is equal to matrix inverse for one times one matrix is just taking one over the one entry, the one by one identity matrix is just a one, and the diagonal matrix of the hat matrix is h i i, maybe in our old notation. So that it's not a problem, that's just a number, and we know it if we know the hat matrix. Then xi transpose is just a few rows of the design matrix. In the case down here, just one row, a row vector. And x transpose x inverse, we have computed anyway to get beta hat. So there is no new problem. So that's actually quite convenient form for the result. Good, and then there is a second bit which I do in the notes, which I'm not going to explain here. We can also work out what happens to the estimated variance. So sigma hat squared, we know is one over n minus p minus one, sum i from one to n by i minus y hat i squared. That was how we estimated this. And correspondingly, sigma hat squared i is the estimate with the rows in i left out, so that sum i not in i, otherwise from 1 to n, y i minus y i hat squared. And now we need to be a bit careful because n has changed because we left out some rows. So we need here 1 over n minus size of i minus p minus 1. And we can also ask how much do these two numbers differ, but you see we will use exactly the same techniques. And even in the notes, I'm not going through the algebra again. It's similar to what we did here, but the point is there is a formula which relates this to that. And it's done only in terms of things which we already know when we have computed the regression estimate, so there's no need to fit the model again. Good, so these are the results we need here. And in the next video we will build on that and see how we can make use of these changes in estimates we have now understood.